700 miles above Earth. A constellation of silent sentinels cuts through the void. Each satellite, no larger than a refrigerator, carries technology worth more than most nations' defense budgets. They watch, they calculate, they wait. Below, in the pre-dawn darkness of the Nevada desert, a test missile ignites. 5,000 degrees of controlled fury accelerate skyward at three miles per second. In milliseconds, infrared sensors lock onto the thermal bloom. Data streams cascade through laser links between satellites. Algorithms process trajectories faster than human thought. Then, from orbit, death descends. A kinetic kill vehicle, guided by artificial intelligence and propelled by cold equations of physics, streaks earthward. No explosion, no flash. Just the mathematical certainty of two objects occupying the same space at hypersonic velocity. The future of warfare has arrived, and America holds the keys. 0847 hours. Vandenberg Space Force Base, California. September 14th, 2025. For the first time since the nuclear age began, a nation stands on the threshold of rendering ballistic missiles obsolete, not through treaties or diplomacy, but through technology so advanced it borders on science fiction. The Golden Dome program represents America's most audacious defense initiative since the Manhattan Project, a $542 billion commitment to building the world's first comprehensive missile shield. The stakes couldn't be higher. Russia deploys avant-garde hypersonic glide vehicles that travel at Mach 20. China's DF-17 missiles maneuver through the atmosphere like guided meteors. North Korea's ICBMs grow more sophisticated with each test. Traditional deterrence, the promise of mutual annihilation, faces its greatest challenge in decades. Golden Dome aims to change the fundamental calculus of nuclear warfare. If successful, it won't just defend America, it will redefine what it means to be a global superpower in the age of hypersonic weapons. Golden Dome isn't just a missile defense system, it's a revolution in military architecture. Where Israel's Iron Dome protects a nation the size of New Jersey, Golden Dome will shield all of North America. Where existing US systems, like the ground-based mid-course defense, can handle perhaps a dozen incoming warheads, Golden Dome is designed to defeat hundreds. The system represents eight integrated layers of defense, from space-based interceptors to terminal phase kill vehicles. At its heart lies the proliferated warfighter space architecture, 550 satellites networked through laser communication links, creating a mesh of sensors that can track a baseball-sized object anywhere on Earth. Compare this to any adversary system. Russia's S-500 can engage perhaps eight targets simultaneously. Golden Dome's battle management network, powered by artificial intelligence and quantum computing, can coordinate responses to swarms of incoming threats across multiple domains simultaneously. The numbers tell the story. 44 current ground-based interceptors will be augmented by hundreds of next-generation interceptors. Dozens of space-based kill vehicles will orbit overhead. Glide phase interceptors will provide the final layer of defense. It's not just about stopping missiles, it's about making the very concept of missile attack obsolete. Golden Dome's genesis traces back to Ronald Reagan's Strategic Defense Initiative, the Star Wars program that envisioned space-based defenses but lacked the technology to realize them. What was impossible in 1983 became inevitable in 2025. Thanks to advances in miniaturization, artificial intelligence, and commercial space launch, the turning point came when SpaceX proved that massive constellations were economically feasible. Starlink demonstrated that hundreds of satellites could be deployed and maintained at a fraction of traditional costs. The Space Development Agency took note, launching its own proliferated architecture for military applications. Lieutenant General Michael Getline, Golden Dome's program director, inherited a program that existed more in PowerPoint presentations than reality. Within months, his team coordinated efforts across the Missile Defense Agency, Space Force, and traditional defense contractors. Lockheed Martin brought expertise from the Terminal High Altitude Area Defense System. Northrop Grumman contributed interceptor technology from decades of missile defense work. Raytheon provided radar and sensor integration. But the real breakthrough came from non-traditional players. Anduril Industries developed AI-powered battle management systems. Palantir created data fusion platforms that could process terabytes of tracking information in real time. 
Microsoft's Azure Cloud provided the computational backbone for simulations and command protocols. By late 2025, the Shield contract, Scalable Homeland Innovative Enterprise Layered Defense, opened the floodgates for industry participation, worth $151 billion over 10 years. It represented the largest defense procurement in modern history. The message was clear. America was betting its future on active defense. The scenario begins at 3.14 local time. Deep in the Gobi Desert, a road mobile launcher erects its missile. Chinese military communications, intercepted by NSA satellites, suggest an exercise. But Golden Dome's AI doesn't care about intentions, only capabilities. First layer, next generation overhead. Persistent infrared satellites detect the heat bloom of ignition from geostationary orbit, 22,000 miles above Earth. The sensor data streams to Space Command headquarters in Colorado. Second layer, medium Earth orbit tracking satellites acquire the missile's trajectory. Machine learning algorithms eliminate false positives. Meteorites, aircraft, debris. This is the real deal. A DF-17 hypersonic glide vehicle launched on a parabolic arc that will take it over the North Pole before diving toward North America. Third layer, the hypersonic and ballistic tracking space. Sensor constellation provides precision tracking. These low orbit satellites, positioned like pearls on a string, hand off the target from one sensor to the next, maintaining birth to death custody. Fourth layer engagement decision, the missile's boost phase ends. It's now coasting through space, approaching the point where it will deploy its hypersonic glide vehicle. Golden Dome's battle management system calculates intercept solutions. Three options emerge. Option one, space-based interceptors. Two orbital kill vehicles are positioned along the missile's trajectory. They can intercept during mid-course phase before the warhead separates. Engagement probability, 87%. Option two, ground-based interceptors from Alaska. Next generation interceptors with multi-object kill capability can handle the primary warhead and any decoys. Engagement probability, 73%. Option 3. Glide phase interceptors launched from Aegis destroyers off the west coast. These can engage the hypersonic glide vehicle during its atmospheric flight. Engagement probability, 65%. The AI recommends a layered approach, space-based intercept as the primary shot, with ground-based backup. Human commanders have 14 seconds to approve or modify the engagement plan. They approve. At T plus 847 seconds after launch, the space-based interceptor fires its maneuvering thrusters. Cold gas jets orient the kill vehicle toward its target. Onboard sensors, infrared, visible light and millimeter wave radar lock onto the incoming warhead. The closing velocity is astronomical, 35,000 miles per hour combined speed. At this velocity, the kinetic energy released by impact equals 150 pounds of TNT. No explosive warhead necessary. Pure physics does the work. But this isn't just about one interceptor and one target. Golden Dome's true test comes when the system faces not one missile, but dozens. Not a single warhead, but a coordinated attack with decoys, jammers, and countermeasures. In the simulation's climax, the Chinese missile deploys not one warhead, but three, two decoys and one genuine threat. The space-based interceptor's AI brain, trained on millions of simulated encounters, analyzes radar returns, thermal signatures, and trajectory patterns. In microseconds, it selects the real warhead. Impact occurs 180 miles above the Pacific Ocean. No sound, no flash visible from Earth's surface. Just the sudden cessation of a threat that minutes earlier could have leveled downtown Los Angeles. The kill is confirmed by multiple sensors. The threat board in NORAD's Cheyenne Mountain Complex updates, threat neutralized, but Golden Dome's most impressive feature isn't its ability to destroy, it's its capacity to deter. When potential adversaries know their most advanced weapons can be intercepted with near certainty, the calculus of aggression changes fundamentally. The successful intercept ripples through military establishments worldwide. In Moscow, analysts scramble to understand how American technology achieved what was theoretically impossible just decades ago. In Beijing, military planners calculate the cost of building enough missiles to overwhelm the defense and find the numbers staggering. 
the strategic impact extends beyond pure military capability. Golden Dome represents America's return to technological supremacy in defense. During the Cold War, nuclear parity meant mutual vulnerability. Golden Dome breaks that equation, offering the prospect of security through active defense rather than threatened retaliation. Allied nations take notice. Japan expresses interest in hosting Golden Dome sensors to extend coverage over the Pacific. NATO allies explore integration with European missile defense systems. Even traditional neutrals begin reconsidering their defense postures in light of American protective capabilities. But the system's mere existence creates new challenges. Russia and China accelerate development of countermeasures. More sophisticated decoys, maneuverable warheads, and even anti-satellite weapons designed to blind Golden Dome sensors. The shield sparks an arms race in space as adversaries seek to neutralize America's defensive advantage. Congressional Budget Office analysts estimate the full program cost at $542 billion over 20 years. Critics question whether any defense can be perfect enough to justify such expense. Supporters argue that saving even one major American city would validate the entire investment. The diplomatic implications prove equally complex. Arms control treaties, designed for an era of mutual vulnerability, become obsolete when one side can neutralize the other's deterrent. New negotiations must address the balance between offensive and defensive systems, or risk an unconstrained arms competition. Behind Golden Dome's technological marvel lies an army of engineers, technicians, and production workers. At Lockheed Martin's facility in Alabama, teams work around the clock assembling next-generation interceptors. Each unit requires 50,000 individual components, sourced from suppliers across 47 states. In California's Silicon Valley, software engineers at Palantir debug algorithms that must distinguish between real warheads and sophisticated decoys in microseconds. Their code, tested in thousands of simulations, will make life-or-death decisions faster than any human could process. At SpaceX's Starbase facility in Texas, production lines churn out satellites at unprecedented rates. Elon Musk's vision of making space access routine becomes the foundation for America's ultimate defense. Each Falcon Heavy launch carries up to 60 Golden Dome sensors, reducing the cost per satellite from millions to hundreds of thousands. The program supports over 300,000 jobs across all 50 states. Shipyard workers in Mississippi build Aegis destroyers equipped with glide phase interceptors. Radar technicians in Alaska maintain the massive early warning systems that provide Golden Dome's first alerts. Software developers in Austin write the battle management code that ties everything together. But perhaps most crucial are the young Space Force officers monitoring the system 24-7, trained on scenarios that would have been science fiction a generation ago. They represent the first generation of warriors whose primary mission is preventing war through technological superiority rather than preparing to fight one. These guardians understand what previous generations could only dream of, the possibility of making their homeland truly safe from long-range attack. Their vigilance ensures that Golden Dome's promise, protection through strength, remains more than just political rhetoric. Golden Dome represents more than a weapons system, it embodies a fundamental choice about America's place in the world. For 70 years, nuclear deterrence rested on a paradox, security through mutual vulnerability. Both superpowers remained safe because both could be destroyed. Golden Dome offers a different path, security through technological superiority and active defense. This shift carries profound moral implications. If America can shield itself from attack while retaining the ability to project power globally, does it fundamentally alter the balance of international relations? Critics argue that perfect defense makes America more likely to take risks, knowing the homeland remains secure. Supporters contend that strength enables restraint, that a protected America can engage with the world from a position of confidence rather than fear. The program also reflects deeper questions about the relationship between technology and security. Golden Dome's success depends on artificial intelligence making split-second decisions about threats traveling at hypersonic speeds. We're not just building a missile defense system. We're creating an automated guardian that will operate beyond human timescales and reaction speeds. History suggests that revolutionary military technologies reshape international order. 
the atomic bomb ended World War II and created the Cold War's structure. Precision-guided munitions enabled the US military's transformation in the 1990s. Golden Dome may prove equally transformative, ushering in an era where geography and distance once again matter in ways they haven't since the dawn of the missile age. Whether this transformation enhances global stability or undermines it remains the critical question. A successful Golden Dome could usher in an era of renewed American hegemony, backed by both offensive and defensive superiority. Alternatively, it could trigger an arms race that makes the world less safe despite America's enhanced protection. The Golden Dome program forces us to confront a fundamental strategic question. Is a world where America possesses near-perfect missile defense more stable or less stable than our current system of mutual vulnerability? Consider the alternatives. If you were China or Russia, facing an increasingly effective American missile shield, would you accept strategic inferiority, build more weapons to overwhelm the defense, or develop entirely new classes of threats? And if you were designing America's defense strategy for the next decade, would you double down on Golden Dome's promise of active defense, or would you seek arms control agreements that preserve some form of mutual deterrence? This is DIB Dispatch, where half-trillion-dollar projects meet the future of warfare. Golden Dome isn't just changing how America defends itself, it's rewriting the rules of global power in the space age. The shield is rising. The question isn't whether it will work, it's whether the world is ready for what comes next.